himself Mayor Pete because a lot of people have a lot of trouble pronouncing his last name, Buttigieg. Uh, but right now, he is one of the hottest things going in the Democratic presidential pack, which is unusual if you think of the times where he are so many bigger and better known names. Gay and Christian served in Afghanistan, a Harvard grad, Rhodes Scholar, so much more. Yet he has jumped to third in the Monmouth University poll that has Joe Biden on top, uh, Bernie Sanders behind him. And again, again, Buddha judge not that far away. To Real Clear Politics co-founder Tom Bevin, Democratic pollster Doug Schoen, California RNC committee woman and attorney uh, Hamid Dillon. Uh, you know, I, mean, I ended with you. Let me get your sense on what you make of this. Uh, he is a, a phenomenon. The phenomenon can come and go. I mean, uh, we, we know that from past experiences. We know it just looking at the polling of this election year, uh, pre-year, I should say. So what do you make of it? Harmeet, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, I didn't realize that was for me. So, um, absolutely. Look, I think it is great that he's uh, come out of the gate strong for him. He's definitely a refreshing new voice in politics. And um, there's a lot of appeal to him. He's not the, he doesn't have all the baggage of some of the existing candidates. And, and so, in that sense, I think he's doing great. But I think he's actually gotten himself out a little ahead of his skis uh, in the sense that I think his uh, situation recently with Mike Pence criticizing him for his... Um, his affiliation with Donald Trump and being, I think, kind of sanctimonious in that recent appearance where he was criticizing him for his faith. And, and, and it, it seemed very preachy and, I think, off note for him. And so I think that's not really worked out well. But he also hasn't had a chance to be exposed to all of the sharp, uh, sharp fingernails and the attacks that are likely to come from the Democrats. And so I think the shine is going to come off of him pretty soon as the others perceive him as a front runner and begin tearing him down, just like they've done with Kamala Harris and some of the other uh, promising new, uh, new stars in this firmament. You know, uh, to her point, Doug, Sean, about, uh, you know, raising some of these issues that might offend the religious right, uh, but, but to do so on their own turf or to do so and, again, impound the issue and, and go after the vice president uh, for his views on gays and what have you, it, it is a risky strategy. Uh, it, it, it might earn you a great deal of support within the Democratic Party. And in a general election, how does it play out? Well, it's not going to play out well in a general election, I don't think. But candidly, uh, he's not worried about the general election now. He figures if he can get through the primary, it'll be such a huge story that whatever fights he's had now with Mike, Mike Pence about his faith or his faith in President Donald Trump will pale in comparison to the enormity of his victory, should he have one. And he has been really, as you've suggested, a fresh face, new ideas. He is the new it candidate. He's uh, replaced Beto O'Rourke. So I think what he's done has largely been smart. I would not advise a Democrat in a Democratic primary to pull his punches against the vice president. You know, it's interesting, too, Don Bevan, because we've, we've seen, uh, you know, a, a number of candidates emerge. Uh, Camilla Harris at first, when she was raising so much money, still continues to raise a good deal of money than Beto O'Rourke, to Doug's point. And uh, so maybe with, with some luck, all the 16 or 17 or ultimately 300 candidates will get their, cha with their chance uh, to be in the lead here. But what do you make of what's happening and the soul searching that a lot of Democrats are doing as they ponder all of these candidates? Well, I think it confirms what we already know, which is this race is wide open. And, and I think Democratic, Democratic voters are going to be looking around and they're, they're weighing all the different options. I think the Buttigieg boomlet is real. We've seen him rise in the polls in Iowa, New Hampshire, nationally. Uh, but I think the real proving ground for him is going to be the debate stage, which is going to happen in June. And that's where he can really sort of make his mark, I think, on a national level, if he's able to perform well there and, and separate himself from some of the other Democratic candidates. That will be a chance for him to really catapult himself into the top tier um, if, if he's able to do, uh, if he's able to have a great debate performance. You know, I also follow the money, Armid, and, and it's interesting that he all of a sudden started surging, raising a good deal of money. Uh, uh, by the latest count, $7 million in, in the first quarter from 159,000 individuals. That was out of nowhere. And uh, I'm wondering if the two go hand in hand. What do you think? Well, this says a couple of different things. And so, yeah, it's absolutely a strong performance for somebody who's been a mayor. He's been a mayor for eight years, and I think really came out of nowhere to most of us. But 
a lot of these candidates have had a really strong first couple of weeks with small donors. Right. That speaks to the hunger in the Democratic Party for some better leadership, I think. I think that, you know, that I think is a warning sign for the older, more established candidates that maybe the electorate in the Democratic Party is looking for somebody new, fresh, younger, and, 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 and has something different to offer than their usual kind of shrill, one-note, anti-Trump message. But unfortunately, then, Pete just went through that to the side and went to the far left immediately as well. I was kind of thinking he was going to stick to the middle and be sort of this conservative Christian gay candidate. But in fact, he's actually turned out to go on the far extreme on abortion and on some of these other issues. And I think that's really not going to serve him that well, because there are members of the Democratic Party, a lot of voters who are more conservative than these candidates. And I think that that's really going to be their challenge to capture that middle, which was actually pretty appealing to Donald, that Donald Trump was able to capture in the 2016 election. And if they all go to the far left, I think it is actually a miscalculation. I agree with Doug's point that the calculation is now winning the primary, right. but I don't think that's necessarily going to really play out for them because they cannot assume that the electorate is going to go along with ninth month abortion and very far extreme issues like that. You know, Doug, I, I, I tend to like math and look at a, num a lot of sure. numbers, which, of course, richly earns me the nerd label that I embrace. I'm comfortable you and embracing both, it. Uh, <laughs> and I. I I, I so see a, a brokered convention, uh, you know, with so many candidates in the race, with, with proportional voting and, and awarding of delegates that way, even in California, it's not just Kamala Harris. There are other candidates now, Congressman Swalwell and a host of others. You could divide that up and we could get to the convention where none of them have the, the, the number of delegates needed and might go through a series of votes before we know mm -hmm. the nominee. What, what are you looking at? Well, I, I think that's certainly possible and I wouldn't for a second, Neil, rule it out. I would say there are thresholds that candidates need to get. I think it's about 15 percent in most states to get delegates. So I suspect that the process will narrow itself out on Super Tuesday, March 3rd, when we have Texas and California, among right. a number of other states. But that being said, with 18 candidates, I think it would be foolhardy to say, oh, we'll have a clear front runner and he or she'll be nominated that or on the path to nomination. I think we really have to see how the first month or so plays out and then yeah. uh, wait. What do you think, Tom? I agree completely. I mean, broker convention, first of all, it would be awesome uh, <laughs> as a, as for, for TV and, and for politics right. in general. Um, it would be very fun to cover, very dramatic, but I still, it's, it's still unlikely at this point because I agree with Doug's point. The, the process has a way of, of winnowing itself down, uh, winnowing this field down. I think we'll see that happen, um, you know, in the first month or so, given how, they, how California has moved up its primary. So, but again, I think race is still wide open, so anything's possible. All right. I didn't know we were up to 18. That's amazing. All right, guys, thank you all very, thank very you, much. Neil. It's still early on in the process here. Yes.